Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to round one coverage of the Ledgestone Insurance Open here at the beautiful Lake Eureka Temporary Course. We're winding down the Pro Tour here with this Discraft sponsored event and coverage powered by Nick Productions. My name is Steve Ratchin, here with David Hopkins, and who do we have on the card today, David? Thanks, Steve. We have Drew Gibson, Kale LaVisca, Dana Vici, and Brian Earhart, and we are starting on this notorious hole one over the water, pretty much just pump it out. Don't turn it over too much and uh, make sure you get over that, that lake. Exactly, we have the daunting 633 foot hole one here, par four. Object, throw it over the water, but you can't crush it too hard because there is OB deep over the crest of this hill. And Drew Gibson looks like he did put a good looking smash on that. That's definitely getting over. Yeah, his game plan was just take a destroyer, throw it hard, get in bounds. And that he did. Kale, Mr. Smooth. Looks like he got a little too much turn on that, but he should be safe. Yeah, you'll be seeing players uh, playing a little bit more safe over to the right. Uh, you take yourself away from the water OB shot, but you leave yourself with a more elevated, longer upshot to get inside the circle for the birdie three. And it looks like Dana did similar things as Kale. Yeah, I just saw Dana pump out there towards the gravel. The gravel is inbounds, and we don't get out of bounds until the paved road right behind that. Oh, and Ooh. Earhart found that paved road. As a lefty, this whole and many holes here actually uh kind of difficult but we'll see brian come back after that one coming from his ob shot ob again yeah it looked like after taking uh his meter relief in there he slipped on the gravel which pushes this towards the water on the upshot and we'll be throwing five from there and dana with a good looking upshot i believe he did stay in bounds and kale showing us how it's done getting inside circle one there and Drew Gibson, was this his drive? Yeah, this is how far he pumped it out there. But it looked like the wind coming off the lake there hunt him out a little bit wide, put him right towards the circle's edge. Not exactly where he's going to want to be, staring down a death putt on the first hole of the tournament. That's right. And you just saw Kale from just outside the circle, maybe oh. miss, miss cage front, as Drew did there. Yeah, put him a little bit uphill. And this is Earhart for oh, a five. No. Oh, and he hits the front cage as well. That's three in a row front cage. Let's see if Dana can correct. There we go. There it is, and that's a birdie three for him. Yeah. And the rest is a formality here. Drew's going to tap in for a par. Yeah, Drew and Cal, uh, they're going to be a little bit you know, upset that they didn't capitalize on their birdie opportunities, but they're happy that they stayed in bounds throughout the whole way, taking a par and moving on, and that's really how this whole course plays, is that you really have to game plan and strategy of which holes you're going to attack and which holes you're not because any hole out here can be an instant quad bogey you're exactly right after one hole gibson and kale both even dana getting the lone birdie and brian with two ob strokes sitting two over tell me about hole two here steve yeah hole two here uh 615 feet downhill dog leg right we have ob rope to the right and ob water left uh, players are really just gonna choose how much they want to bite off the drive. The more they bite off, the easier the upshot, but the more OB comes into play. Dana taking a little bit more of a conservative route, throwing a uh, Glow MD3 up the gap, and unfortunately kicks a tree left. Drew, I believe this is a KC rock that he's throwing. Looks like he's not happy with it. It looks like he wanted a little more Seems turn to on slow it. Slow down. Oh, oh, he should be fine. Yeah, that's in prime position to. To have a look to get to the green from there and one of the best in the game at touch turnover shots kale lavisca shows you right there exactly what you want to do on this hole beautiful shot right there and brian what so brian found a route that no one else knew was there big lefty power hyzer over the tree line and puts himself dust on a fairway yeah, he looks at those pine trees, says, ha, 60 feet, no problem. Just, More than two ways, just getting a cat there. Yep, lefty hyzer right over it. Dana, from a very difficult position, looks like a good-looking turn on that, but not quite to the pin. He's definitely outside circle, too. Yeah, after hitting that early tree, he really didn't have the best opportunity to get to the green. Uh, so just on another mid-range in the fairway. 
And this is almost the same shot he threw off the tee, maybe a little less turn. Kale looking to get under this tree. Oh, and he does. And he is looking at, what, a 20-footer for a birdie three. Unbelievable shot there. And trying to match Kale. Drew coming up a bit short. Slow Looks down, like slow down, slow down. Does, yeah, he's inside circle one, and he stayed in bounds there. Yes, sir. Brian and getting a little risky here. Brian going ESP buzz sidearm flashes in front of the cage, but just drifts ever so slightly out of bounds. And Dana a little bit out of position, has to a flex sidearm into the green and gets hung up by that guardian tree to the right. Oh, so it looks like Drew is just outside circle one, but he did stay in bounds. Ooh, and a good looking putt Ooh, there. This great is birdie. Second hole in, you know, after that that missed putt on hole one, he's. Happy that one went in, and he's got that birdie. Oh, no. It looks like that tree was just in Dana's way, causing him to miss a little bit right side. Kale, after the smoothest throw the soul's probably seen all weekend, taps him for the easy birdie. And Brian walking up here is just trying to save a par with the out-of-bound stroke that he had. Now, you may be seeing them uh, being a little bit further away from the water than you would expect. However, there was a gravel path. That was inbounds that players were given relief one meter perpendicular off the gravel opposed to the one meter off the water on this hole. So after two holes of play, Gibson gets the birdie to be one down. Kale, one down as well. Dana, after the great birdie in hole one, takes um, the bogey to get back to even. And Brian scrambles the par out of OB and is two up. Some swirly vultures. Moving on to hole three, the first toolable hole, I guess you could say. Yeah. I guess hole one's toolable, but here we got a par three, 260 feet. Uh, many different routes I saw over the weekend. I saw some forehands straight up the gut. I even saw some hyzers out of some people. Yeah, players can go flex sidearm inside route. Uh, scary sidearm hyzer through those two trees, bringing oh. OB in the play. What? I think Drew just threw a leopard three and and went off the chains there. Kale, Mr. Smooth, right up the gut, but he does hit a tree. He's probably sitting right outside circle two there. Brian, bridge route. He's just going right up the gut with a buzz. Putting the out, the OB out of play. And Dana, glow MD3 as well up the gut. Does it get the carry that's needed? He looks didn't like look too a, happy. Yeah, it looks like a hunt up a little bit short on him. Brian, after hitting the early tree, is just trying to throw a zone up shot around gets another tree in this hole and as you can see even though we end up on a short 260 foot par three there is still some trickery around the fairway to get up to the green brian with a good looking attempt but heiser's out early and he's gonna have to settle for what a four there and dana yeah dana not connecting on the circle two putt there it's got to settle for the par but and there's Drew, a birdie splashing off of the ace gets the birdie too yeah, that would be the worst, seeing him splash out and go on OB only 25 feet from the basket. So good thing he, he got that birdie and moving on. Yeah, I only heard about that happening once this weekend with uh, a skip off of a hole later in the round. Hole 12, the water tower hole. Kale right. cleaning up, just a formality for him and most of these other guys. So after hole three... Drew picks up the birdie, then I'm going to two down. Kale staying at one down, Dana staying at even, and Brian moving to three up to three holes. Man. And if that par three wasn't difficult enough, we are moving on to a even harder par three. Hole four here, averaging about a third of a stroke over par, 423 feet downhill, but OB creeps the right-hand side the entire way. Yeah, if you ask me, it's it's one of the most interesting type holes because off the tee, it looks like you're going to want the disc to get over that little ridge and maybe Anheuser a little bit. But in reality, it's pretty much dead straight after that gap. So Yeah, the second kind of, you, uh, you have a disc crest that hill with a little bit of Anheuser, it's just going to keep traveling downhill out of bounds right. Kale manages to come back and play. 
Looks like he's in circle one there and a beautiful shot. Here we have Dana putting Dana. a little bit of turn on it. And he wants that to start straightening out, but it looks like it fades out a little too quick, and he's going to be on the left side of the fairway there. Yeah, and even though we see that shot end up on the left side of the fairway there, uh, beginning of the fairway pretty tight in the woods, but as you get down close to the basket, there are a ton of gaps that get up and down to the basket. But we see Brian find that out of bounds to the right pretty early on, too. Yeah. Shouldn't be too difficult of a little pitch up. He's definitely not running that. He's got at least 80 to 100 feet. And here's what we're talking about. Even though Dana found the woods late, there's enough gaps to get up and down uh, the scramble, the par save. Uh, Drew went way past the basket and ended up having to throw a overhand putter Scooby from 25 feet <laughs> what? just to get what? inside the circle. Look at that birdie from Kale. And Ryan cleaning up yet another out of bounds stroke. He's gonna have to start staying in bounds if he wants to be in contention in this tournament. That's really the name of the game of this course is that there are so many opportunities to go out of bounds. So much so that through the four rounds this weekend, there were over 3,500 out of bounds strokes. Yeah, 3,500 out of bounds strokes. We're gonna need a stat check on that. Yeah, um, fact anybody, check for days. If anybody can look that up and comment later, we could get that 3,500 number. And speaking of OB City, we are moving on to the infamous baseball hole. Infamous hole is right. Five, 476 feet, dog leg left, you can say, over a baseball fence. Yeah. What uh, are players looking to do here, Dave? I mean, if you're going for it, you need to put a crush on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that not many of the players on this card are going to be going for it kind of just a safe hyzer make sure they get over the fence just like kale did just look like and he made it just inside circle two but you could tell he wasn't really going for that yeah. gibson might be though gibson's got the arm. gibson's got the power he's given it the height and the hyzer to push past the fence but can he get inside the circle oh and gibson does go not only does he get inside the circle hits the bin below the basket oh did it hit the bin i didn't even realize that you know what? I'm going to count that as a metal hit off the T4. Right. And that's two metal hits out of three holes so far. Oh, is that Dana coming up a little oh, short of the fence? Just got caught. So this, this drop zone that they go to is not easy either. It's it's at least 300 feet to the basket. Look at Brian just playing a safe, I'm going to guess, a force. Safe little forehand. Just get out there taking his three. Yeah. I've seen a lot of players this week just not even messing with this hole. Just pitching it out going up mj for example i seen him i think all four rounds just play it safe yeah so. and and that's where you see this pro caliber players create a game plan and stick to it if they know that they're not going to go for the birdie two in this hole they're going to take the easiest route possible just to get up and down take the three because going out of bounds in this hole is a guaranteed four at the minimum yeah and isn't it the one of the hardest or the hardest hole in the course Let's or see, second this, hardest this hole. hole is currently playing uh 0.73 above par for round oh, one. Oh, and there's drew gibson putting in that birdie so he's uh he's heating up early on here in the round that's for sure and kale looking for a par yep nothing wrong with that folks brian sticking to the game plan Picking up his par, and Dana, is he going to come out with a bogey? So a good shot off the uh, drop zone, you know, saving the bogey. Managing just to only putt once there, so. Yeah, 100%. After five holes, Drew Gibson, three under par. Kayla Visca, two under par. Dana Vici going the one up after that out of bounds on the baseball field hole. And Brian Earhart managing to stay in bounds, get the par, and hopefully get his round back on track here. We're moving on to hole six here, 897 feet, par four, dogleg right. This hole is playing as the most difficult hole for round one, playing an average of 1.15 strokes over par. As we fly over here, we see two different pin placements. Dave, what can you tell us about those? Yeah, so for the first and the fourth round, we played the pin on the left-hand side, as you saw, and the second and third were the right. I'm... I'm not sure exactly which one's more difficult. In my eyes, I think the right one would be more for a right-handed player, but 
Some yeah, it's definitely you need to look at because you see the pin placement to the left and it's a little bit further, but you have more room to, to hang out a hyzer to it. And even though the pin to the right is shorter, you have to play it over OB longer to get to it. Exactly. And you just saw Drew put a smash on it, but it trickled out of bounds. Kale looks like he landed right in the middle of the fairway. Ryan throwing a good looking backhand, just getting it out there. These guys are just trying to throw maybe 400, 415 feet to a good landing zone. Exactly, yeah. Off this drive, you're trying to play a hyzer, ensure that you land inbounds, and then depending on where your drive lands, see if you want to attack the green or not. Kale, he's just saying, my game plan, I'm going for four. Ooh. I'm going to hopefully, yo, okay, stay inbounds. Yeah, that was close. He threw all over OB the entire time, so if that didn't get back in he would have been throwing with a penalty stroke so it's like dana doesn't like it back. and no it takes an unfortunate skip into the ob oh man brian here going lefty heiser he's really gonna have to fight this tree line left yeah surprising because brian brian's i would say his forehand is better than his backhand both great he's a great player but i think he's more comfortable with the forehand so it's surprising to see him try to fight those trees and go backhand there yeah, but hey, you know what? He peered it, and it was pretty creamy right there. He's ran right the center of the fairway. Oh, no. So Drew, after going out of bounds on the drive, tries to go for the green to scramble his par and goes out of bounds again. Is he going to be throwing five from there? I believe so, but he's going to be right next to the basket. Shouldn't have an issue putting that one in. And Kale, game plan Kale, putting it up there. Going to take a four, no problem. Man, this is where Dane is throwing after his out of bounds shot. Ooh, is that OB? Oh, it was. Oh, no way. After hitting the spectator rope, it seems like he dropped just outside. Brian, after talking so much about how great a sidearm is on a righty hyzer hole, he decides to throw zero sidearms and gets the par from where he's sitting, you would think. Oh, I thought I thought uh, Drew was going to be a little bit closer there, so it looks like he's going to have to... Settle for, what, a six maybe as Kale puts in for his beautiful looking par there. There we go. And you can see with all that OB on this hole why it is playing the most difficult to par during this first round. We only have Brian and Kale with the pars and uh, Drew and Dana both taking sixes. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because you see Drew go out of bounds off the drive, try to go for it, go out of bounds on the second shot, and Dana playing the layup game unfortunately skips OB twice. Yeah, so after six holes, Drew one under, Kale two under, Dana three over, and Brian four over, but he took uh, pars on the last two holes, so I think Brian's starting to warm up here. We're moving on to hole number seven, kind of a sigh of relief type hole after playing two of the most difficult holes on the course here comes in at 275 feet there is creek ob on the left and a road pretty far over to the right that doesn't really come into contention looks like kale's trying to flip up an m4 but hits a tree and kicks out of bounds surprising to see kale you know known for straight through the woods type shots uh, get a hole like this and yeah, very, very unfortunate, especially since that was only one of five out of bounds on this hole all day. And the previous hole held 141 out of bounds. And Drew flipping up. I'm going to guess that's the same rock maybe he threw off hole two. Yeah, either head. Casey Rock, Casey Aviar up the gut, inside the circle. He's going to be happy with that one. And Dana going flex sidearm to avoid that tree to the left right by the tee. And does he get the skip? He does. It looks like he, yeah, may have gotten up to circle. Yeah, he got a good flare off the ground. Did hit a tree, but stay inside the circle. So, you know, he's going to have a, a look for two. Kale, after unfortunately going out of bounds early, just has to pitch up to the green. Oh, and Dana hitting top of the cage for his birdie there. Oh, no, just a touch high. Oh, a touch, just a touch low. All right, can we get it just right here? There it is. There nice we through. go. The third bear had it right. Brian's going to be tapping in for his par. Dana will do the same. And Kale's putt here. This is for his bogey four after the out-of-bounds stroke. Did the best he could from where he was. Uh, 
Funny story, one of the players that played earlier in the day was spectating, took off his shoes and socks, went diving into that creek to get Kale's disc because that M4 has been in his bag for about two and a half, three years and is his baby. What so a guy. So that disc got saved and uh, if I remember right, Kale does some work with it throughout the rest of the round. That's for sure. We have, I believe, maybe the third most difficult hole here. Yeah, this hole is no joke 793 feet however you have to clear at least 275 300 feet over this tight gap to get inbounds where they're throwing from is out of bounds and you're not in until you crest right there and if you could do what drew did um holy yeah, you want to do that every time you yeah do that maybe 430 feet straight yeah i bet players would pay to just put their disc there every single time unbelievable shot Brian, oh, a little bit hung left. And this is the trickery with this hole. If you hit early at all, you're just dropping right out of bounds and have to go to the drop zone, which is merely, what, 600-ish feet away? At least. Dana to putting the a good and move on that one, though. And Dana's taking that Kinda. same disc he threw on hole one and peered it just the same. And what can Kale do here? Get over it. Come on, baby. Fight. 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 Does he get the green flag? No, oh, it did not fight. Out of bounds. Oh, man. So we're going to have Brian and Kale thrown from the drop zone. This is Brian. Ooh. Ooh. Off the tree, a little rollback towards the pin. A little wraparound. And Kale here, what's he got? Off the drop zone, and he's just playing Heiser. This green is so tight as you get towards the basket with out of bounds left and some tight rough to the right. He's just Shit. saying, you know what? I went out of bounds off the tee. I'm just going to. Play smart and pitch up, pitch up. Take her five. five. Oh, no, oh. the Dana Squeak OB? Man. So we have, what, three OBs on this? And <laughs> Drew after the unbelievable drive. Oh, maybe after watching Dana's shot go out of bounds there, he just pulled it a little bit right. And uh, not OB, but he's going to have a weird look into the basket there. Kale, a good-looking turnover shot. He's going to settle for, what, his bogey five? Mm-hmm. Brian Earhart with the Rattler. Rattler! Oh, and he runs it off. It goes in. What a par save. 150 gram Rattler there, David. 150 grams? 150 grams. Oh, my Lord. Outside circle two, throw in. Saves the par from the drop zone. Drew from inside the shul over here. Oh, and he puts it in at least 28 feet. So that's a good putt for him. Good birdie. And Dana. Ooh! That was a squeaker. A little bit of a squeaker. A little left side squeaker. And Kale putting in for his bogey five. You can see Dana getting down there to grab his disc. I still can't get over Brian's throwing out of that hole. 150 gram Rattler. What a stud. And after that dynamic hole, we have Gibson going the three under par. Kale back to even. Dana, three over par. And Brian just chilling at four over par. Moving to hole nine, the bridge hole. This hole this year has changed a little bit from previous. Wait, what's going on here? What? Oh, there's big germ on the big left. Big germ what with the 720. Doing? So yeah, this hole, 354 feet. Uh, there's a lot of room to hyzer, as you're seeing Drew do, but I think he may have hyzered a little too much. He cut that a little close to the bridge there. Uh, is it gonna make it? That Ooh. must have been unbelievably overstable. Yeah, yeah, a lot of these guys are just. Wanting this to Heiser. Finally, Brian with his left The sidearm. Let's see what happens. I'm going to guess it's dropping in. Yeah, there we go. Hey, Dave, so, you, got, you got correctly. I sure did. He's looking at, what, maybe 38, 40-foot putt there? Yeah, I mean, he's just stoked to be in balance because this hole is playing like a true island hole this year. Yeah, in previous years, they used to have a layup zone, right? Yeah, they had a layup zone where players could opt oh, to, and Dana goes, be to there. throw up. So Dana does go out of bounds, plays True Island. So he's going to be moving up to the drop zone just to the front of the bridge. It'll he can't lift. Oh, no. So, yeah, those those walls, the ones in the front at least, um, are not the OB lines. The OB lines are actually about 15 to 20 feet in front of those walls, which is kind of deceiving from the tee pad if you don't know it. Yeah, a little bit, but Dana able to get inside the island off the drop zone. Can Kale do the same? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Kale almost goes on the basket with the drop zone. There we go. Get in there. Oh, Sit. it looks like he nicked Sit. the top. But yeah, it's at. Oh, good. He stayed in bounds. All right, Dana. At least that's the second time we've seen Dana go out of bounds, 
head to a drop zone and scramble up and down to just take bogey. So he's minimizing his damage when that is happening, which is crucial and if you need to play. Kale's those, putting play in, scores. and that is it through nine holes. That's it? That You're is not it. Ready? We'll be back. Uh, Gibson sitting at four under. Kale, one over. Dana, four over. And Brian, four over as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the front nine coverage of round one here at Ledgestone Insurance Open. Be sure to catch the back nine coming out soon. Peace. Peace.